Hello everybody and welcome to another top 10 edition of Magic Mike's, proudly sponsored by Patreon supporters and CoolStuffInc.com. You can find cool stuff in stock every day and our co-sponsor CardHoarder.com, offering the best inventory prices and delivery of cards for Magic Online. I'm Evan Irwin and we get started each week by saying hello to my two co-hosts, Aaron Campbell. Hello. Ruben Bressler. <laughs> Y'all all right? You need a mint? That was very murlocky. Some, some water? That was. I was actually going for a snooty Englishman. Like, hello. Oh, okay. Hello. Hello. Yeah. Hello. Three, three yeah, my boyfriend and I have been watching a lot of uh, Great British Baking shows. So mm. we have our favorites. We, we, we imagine, we, we, we exaggerate their voices. We get very into it. And they're so my wholesome. Favorite. They're so my wholesome. favorite. It's honestly one of the most wholesome curious. reality shows out there. Like it's still oh, a yeah. reality show, but you know they don't rely on the drama like a lot of other shows do, and right. the um, the manipulation doesn't feel as overt. Um, and the drama really just comes from the baking itself, where it's like yeah. you know this thing's going to collapse or this thing doesn't taste right. Like that's the tension right there. And right. you know they as truly opposed to American baking shows, which are right. like we've chopped your left arm off, right? You know, and they don't you know you don't feel as manipulated as you do, and the people seem to genuinely like each. other other they support each other even when they're letting you go there's no like you know uh it's just not ruthless they genuinely feel bad about it it's just it's very positive i love sue perkins also they remind me of megan and maria like i feel like watch they have the Mm -hmm. same dynamic yeah Mm -hmm. very nice well we also begin with our choice of the top comment from last week in a segment we call honorable mention where ruben will tell us who was the most eloquent letting us know what card we did not choose as one of our top 10 mill cards ruben Evan, we talked about this. It's grand eloquent. We even had an argument about the same card last week. We did say grand eloquent. This week's most <laughs> grand eloquent comment comes from Overlord Ball Eight Thousand. Aaron, right. Aaron, is that approved? Is that a, is Aaron? I Overlord think Ball? I would remember if, if I had chosen I would Overlord too, Ball yeah. Eight Thousand. Pretty unique username. It's very dankly yeah. snugs, as it were. Who writes? How could you all forget Archive Trap? probably the staple finisher in modern mill decks. Saw huge kitchen table and tournament play during Zendikar block. Evan has said it multiple times that when you give Magic players free stuff, you're going to have a bad time. Five, five mana, target player mills 13, but who cares about five mana when you can path to exile your opponent's creature turn one and mill them for 52? Talk about the best magical Christmas land ever. Your opponent cracks a fetch. Whoop, time to mill 26. I hope we see a reprint in the upcoming Zendikar. Wow. Uh, well, f- first of all, traps not being in Battle for Zendikar was a gigantic mistake. Like, yeah. huge, huge mistake. And I expect them to come back in force. I agree. That said, this is like a $9 rare. For those who don't know, Archive Trap is two blue, three generic mana for a rare instant trap. If an opponent searched their library this turn, you may pay zero rather than pay its mana cost. That's always leads to unfair things. Right. Target opponent puts the top 13 cards of their library into their <laughs> graveyard. I walked into this card so many times. Mm-hmm. Yeah. This was and well, every Sorry. I'm sorry. We got to remember this was in a standard format with fetch lands. Yeah. So you just run smack exactly. into this all the time. And Harrow mm-hmm. and a bunch of other random search like that. Yeah. All of the free traps, the traps that ended up being free or one mana. Mm-hmm. Uh whip flare trap, mind break trap, ravenous trap, sorry Aaron. Um, the redirection trap, yeah. uh, all of those ended up seeing play and they're super cool designs. I would really like to have all of those kind of cards come back. And even the middle of the road, you know, arrow volley and Bayloth cage traps were fine in limited and they were cool to play. I guess that was, we like, oh, sorry. Go ahead. I was just say, sometimes we like to ignore more obvious choices just to make sure y'all are awake because right, exactly. you have an opportunity to contribute and win $50. So get some. That's Perfect. right. D- dunk on us, please. Yeah. <laughs> Let me tell you, it's just to have this kind of Indiana Jones world, part of what was cool yeah. about Indiana Jones was traps, right? Mm-hmm. It's like, you yeah, don't know what's exactly. going to happen and you got to be careful and just run into stuff. And that's neat. Uh, so Overlord Ball 8000, thanks for being a part of the show. Please contact Erin on social media before she blocks you on all of them. <laughs> that's that's uh, I have to, that's a lot of characters to like block. It's a lot of right. characters. Thanks yeah. again. It's also a god that you might have to block from the old world. Yeah, I don't want to get the so wrong like overlord. To, like, what if I got overlord yeah, exactly. ball 8001? Or right. Like 8, right. Or 7999, yeah, right? I don't want to get just... the wrong ball. You know? <laughs> <laughs> wow, this is not the pre show. This is a family. I don't want to drop the ball. B A A L. B A A. It's totally different, y'all. Totally. Well, thank you for uh, thanks again to coolstuffing.com for sponsoring this giveaway and stay tuned for our top 10 list this week. And maybe you can win next week's free gift certificate because it is time to talk. 
talk about plus one, plus one counter cards. We did mm. not actually ever do this list, which right. sometimes Looks we kind of weird. We say things and we're like, well, we did that, right? We're This is our 126th top 10. So wow. there's a good chance we're going to run back over something eventually. But, you know, I looked and I couldn't find anything. It right. looks like we haven't talked I, about them. It doesn't seem like we've talked about this one, which yeah. is weird because there's so many plus one, plus one counter cards. Lots. Well, there's a couple of ways that you could go about this, too. You know, do you want to focus on a creature or something that just gives itself plus one, plus one counters? Do you want something that gives it to everybody? Uh, there were a couple choices here. Right. I mean, you yeah. wouldn't want to make a mill list and put Ulamog on it. That'd be ridiculous. Right? right? Who would want to? Like, I mean, Leviathan is a finisher. Like, what Fate are we doing? Wins? What, like, what's wins? happening in our lives right now? Mm. Look. <laughs> Ruben, why don't you tell us what your number 10 is, buddy? Okay. So the way that I uh, <laughs> decided upon my list this week was that any card that says the text plus one, plus one counter on the card qualified. And there were a ton. I thought over there were a like thousand. Fifth, there were well over a thousand. Yeah. yeah. And um, as best I can tell, only two in the history of magic have the word plus one, plus one counter and are banned in a format. Hmm. Now we may talk about one of them later. I also decided to skip over some of my, some of these cards because I've talked about them on like three of my lists. Sure. And so I put in some other cards that I wanted to talk about instead, but I haven't talked about this one, which is banned in pioneer of all places. Ley line of abundance oh my God. is my number 10. Two colorless, two green for an enchantment. If Leyline of Abundance, as all the Leylines, is in your opening hand, you be you may begin with it in on the battlefield. Whenever you tap a creature for mana, add an additional green. And, for six colorless green green, put a plus one plus one counter on each creature you control. So this eventually got banned in Pioneer because of the mono green Nykthos decks with Nyssa and Oath of Nyssa that were overpowering right at the beginning of Pioneer. Mm-hmm. Um, beginning with two extra green pips in play, of course, with Nykthos, is a powerful uh, start. And you could play a turn one mana elf and go to town. Um, and having the ability to pump your team later, having a mana sink, huge uh, upside, really cool card. Just create... giving a ley line something else to do, because normally, which is which is normally enough, is a ley line just does one thing really well, whether it's Sanctity and you have Hexproof or ley line of the Void and your graveyard's no more, but, you know, sometimes it just doesn't, you, you need something more, and, and and this was a really big ability to tack onto this card. I yeah. know, I can't help but look at, the, when I look at this card, I immediately think of Pose, because one of the drag families, or one of the houses, is the House of Abundance, and so oh, okay. <laughs> I immediately this is a reference like two of you will understand but whenever i see leyland of abundance i hear pray tell in my head go in the house of abundance <laughs> I, I just feel like you know there was a world five even five maybe seven ten years ago where you don't have that last ability like yeah, you've correct. got it's like well look you make all That's your the mana sir conrad put one on top of each other's yeah right exactly immolation shaman growing itself right. all of those kind of things yeah. which for what it's worth i appreciate it's not like i hate it or anything i just sort of i like to recognize these sort of changes where they're giving you both the you know ability and the payoff all in one card and so you just kind of just mix and match some you know mana makers and off you go mm -hmm. uh this card is super cool though the other thing about this card that I always remember personally, I'm not really sure why, but this card is called Leyline of Abundance, and when I first heard the card, I thought they were reprinting a card, because I heard it first, I thought they were reprinting Leonin Abunas instead of Leyline of Abundance. Come on, synonyms. <laughs> Leonin Abunas is a three colorless and a white 2-5 cat cleric originally from Mirrodin. Artifacts Ooh. you control have hex proof. Mm. Wow. Okay, yeah. cool. But Leyline of, Ley of Abundance, Leonin Abunas. Leonin Abunas. Who knows, oh, whatever. Or Aaron, help us. What's your number 10? <laughs> So my number 10 is a card uh, that started off in my Queen Marchesa deck. It was one of the earliest, uh, it was in one of the earliest iterations of this deck. Um, because not only does it put plus one, plus one counters on creatures, it also has a political element to it as well, which I really enjoy. Um, my number 10 is Orzov Advocist. Um, so Orzov Advocist is two colorless and a white. It's a human advisor, one power, four toughness. Originally printed in Commander 2016. Uh, at the beginning of your upkeep, each player may put two plus one, plus one counters 
on a creature they control. If a player does, creatures that player controls can't attack you or a planeswalker you control until your next turn. So you start your turn and you're like, you're going to keep it cute? You know, keep it cute. You want to play? Like, and you, you kind of determine who your friends are and the people who are your friends and who offer to play nice with you can enjoy the benefits and their creatures can get bigger and they can turn them to their opponents and you just kind of laugh and watch them all kill each other. <laughs> this card seems super cool. I like how Wizards just goes all in on the politics when mm-hmm. it comes to commander cards. And I think the more of that seems to yeah. be the better, you know, creating these I weird alliances and then like the backstabbings and then like, you know, mm-hmm. who can you trust and all that stuff. Super yeah, stuff cool. like this and goad and voting. I love it all. Yeah, it's terrific. Uh, so for my number 10 here is a, a bit of a more recent card, um, a, a very popular card, a very powerful card, and a popular uh, or a, a very popular one of mine to deck build with. Um, this card saw a bunch of play in a lot of sort of weenie strategies, sort of go wide strategies, and that's great because it is 100% built for them because it's got a, it's got a mode, you see. And if you just do the, if you just do the one mode at instant speed, you just make them indestructible. But if you do it at sorcery speed, unbreakable mm. formation yeah. gets nutty. Yep. Unbreakable formation is a white and two generic mana for a rare instant from Ravnica Allegiance. Creatures you control gain indestructible until end of turn, but addendum if you cast a spell during your main phase you put a plus one plus one counter on each of those creatures and they gain vigilance until end of turn your giant army comes smashing in with vigilance totally indestructible they just got to soak up the damage somehow this card is great and i love it yep there's a bunch of uh of this card um Hopefully on the horizon, but there was a bunch of this card in standard for a while mm-hmm. next to another plus one plus one counters card that we might talk about, uh, Venerated Loxodon. True. And hopefully in the future, Bossery's Solidarity will join the list Maybe. Uh, as the recent white weenie decks are employing both of them. Yeah, this card is super duper cool. I'll take both yeah. effects. Plays well offensively and defensively. You know, am I the only one that thinks it might be better suited as Boros? Like, because because Boros is the military, right? Possibly. And Azorius is the law. And so I'm just like, mm. sure. Yeah. I mean, this vi- yeah, this very clearly fills a design hole. This mm-hmm. is a development card. Yeah. I'm sure it did something different previously, but you're this is a pretty anti Azorius card because the Azorius decks tend to be the ones that are running the Wraths. Although this also prevents like a deafening Clarion as well. Yeah, I mean, I, I could understand sort of the argument of, well, the, the, the mechanic is perfect for the card, even if maybe the guild isn't perfect for the yeah, effect. Right. Oh, it's a good card, sense. yeah. Yeah, oh, yeah. terrific card. Let's move on here to number and nine. Ad- addendum is super cool because it, it's like two spells in one almost. Oh, absolutely. Uh, Ruben, what's your number nine? My number nine is a card that we've sort of skirted around doing a, a top ten with cards like this one. Um, and we might one day. And if you're going to have a plus one, plus one counters list, I mean, you can't, you I could have put something like Cracklin on this list. I could have put Ivy Elemental, but the one that won a Pro Tour is Endless One. I see. So I kind of got to have Endless One here. Mm. Endless One costs X. It's a zero, zero Eldrazi. Endless One enters the battlefield with X plus one, plus one counters on it. Of course, this was a huge part of the Oath of the Gatewatch Eldrazi winter. Uh, Ji Shen Tao ended up winning that uh, final in an Eldrazi mirror over Yvonne Flock with uh, four copies of Endless One. Yeah, they kind of accidentally ruined modern there for a minute when they made all the yep. Eldrazi stuff stupidly powerful. Six of the top ten decks were Eldrazi, or of the top eight decks were Eldrazi aggro in that tournament. This yeah. was uh, a poster child for. What is special about the Eldrazi? Right. Nothing. This card is just nothing. It's just nothing. It's just X as an XX with counters. It's nothing. There's nothing flavorful. There's nothing weird. Like it has all odds or evens or something. It, it doesn't mess with any weird zones. It's just a completely colorless thing. It is weird how like just stale bread this thing is of like you're not <laughs> representing Eldrazi right. really maybe I guess right I but- mean the the exciting thing about Eldrazi at the beginning was that it's colorless without being an artifact right but we've all we had already done that by the time we'd gotten endless one and so what's new here not much. But it paired well with cards that already existed. Like when yes. you had, you know, your Eye of Ugans or you had your Eldrazi Temples or even your, you know, your 
um, ancient tombs or things like that. Like, you know, this thing, it doesn't take a lot to make this thing very big. Like, it's just sort of mm-hmm. the Eldrazi version of, like, the big dumb idiot. And, you know, I remember uh, when Eldrazi Winter was going on, do you know what the secret weapon for me was to get rid of this card? Necroplasm. <laughs> Because at the end of your turn, destroy oh. each creature with CMC equal to the number of plus and plus encounters. Oh, it doesn't have any. Woo! It's cute. <laughs> oh, I'm sorry. Bye bye. I don't know. I it's... like it. That's a good one. Yeah, I, I think it was <laughs> another a, plus one plus one counter card there. Hey. Necroplasm. Yeah, I believe it was Matt Sperlin who kind of uh, ribbed him on the like, what what is in this one? What is mm-hmm. right? What does what's this mean? Here? What what is your Eldrazi supposed to do now? All right, uh, Aaron, what's number nine? My number nine is the backup plan, a very important part of my Muldrotha EDH deck. Uh, It's also a very good commander in its own right. There are a lot of broken combos that you can do with it, but I'm perfectly happy with where it is. Uh, My number nine is Mazarek Crawl Death Priest. Uh, So Mazarek is three colorless, a black and a green, originally printed in Commander 2015. Legendary creature Insect Shaman, two power, two toughness, and flying. Whenever a player, that's any player, Mm -hmm. sacrifices another person, and put a plus one plus one counter on each creature you control. So Jeez. Moldrotha is a deck that lives and dies by its permanence because you don't want to play a lot of spells because Moldrotha can't bring spells back, but she can bring permanence back. So you're playing a lot of the capsules, you're playing a lot of the seals, you're playing fonts, you're playing uh, you know things you can sacrifice to get effects. And so all of these mana dorks that you played in the early game, you bring Mazarek out and they get really, really big. Mazarek itself can get really big as well and has yeah. flying. Uh, Moldrotha can get big. Um, This thing can just change the game radically. Uh, Not to mention, in a commander game, people are sacrificing things all the time. So even if you're not necessarily going whole hog on sacrificing, somebody is going to be sacrificing just as a matter of course. And so before you know it, you're like, whoop, that's a counter, that's a counter. Every creature, you're going to run out of dice eventually, and it's a really good time. Because it's a permanent anything. Mm -hmm. Lands, creatures, uh, enchantment goes away, like a saga dies or whatever. Like a fabled passage. Mm -hmm. Uh, Yeah, whatever. I run both of the the Merciless Executioner, uh, Curse Catcher, and Flashbag. So you recur that every time. Everyone, including myself, sacrifices. Whoop, 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 whoop. That's a lot. This is a ten and a half dollar mythic for a reason. Mm -hmm. Yeah, three colorless black green for a creature spell might be the scariest casting cost you've got git rog monster you've got lord of extinction you've got vulture as zombie there's a lot of scary stuff there and Mazarek's another and according to the great designer search you have sarah angel you also have sarah angel. no that's two colorless <laughs> two black colorless green. black green was it i think it was, it was five was it five i, I thought know. it was five all Who right knows? anyway all right uh let's take a look here at my number nine this was a card uh, that was originally printed a long time ago. And back in the day, when I read it, I was like, man, this thing seems insane. And as I recall, it didn't see a ton of play. I'll, I'll, t- I'll double check here. But uh, as I recall, I was like, man, you know, some people made some junk tokens lists. Uh, they threw some white weenie decks together. But in casual, on the kitchen table was where Cathar's Crusade mm-hmm. really shines. Two white, three generic mana for a rare enchantment, originally from Avacyn Restored, most recently from Jumpstart. Uh, it says, whenever a creature enters the battlefield under your control, put a plus one, plus one counter on each creature you control. This spirals out of hand really quickly, and despite up to four reprints, is still holding plenty of value. Uh, yeah. And this is just one of those cards that, like, this is the type of effect that I would show someone who doesn't understand magic or doesn't know magic to give them, like, they, oh, wow, really? Like, every time? And you're like, yeah, all these creatures get huge, super huge. And that, to me, is a cool, fun thing to show off. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah. This card is similar to Masarak, in fact. Yeah. Uh, grow your whole team thanks to new stuff coming in. Also, this one is interesting because if multiple creatures come in at the same time, something like Raise the Alarm or even something like Living Death – Everything sees itself, mm-hmm. so they all grow up all at the same time. Yeah, this was a part of my one of my first commander decks. I had a Daxos the Return deck, and so Daxos was able to just pump out these enchantment creatures that would, you know, kind of give you some control over when you wanted to uh, to do this. And the only downside to it, a lot of the reason why a lot of people don't run this is because <laughs> because of the bookkeeping. Like same thing with Masarek, yeah. like you got to be on it, and you got to have your dice, and you got to keep yep. track of it, and it can be a bit of a pain. But I promise you, need you one it's of those chess X cubes. Right. That have 30 <laughs> six dice in them oh my god all right let's move on to number eight mine is higher on someone else's list but reuben do you have one no this is the only higher oh, i have on my list aaron's gotta gotta take it for us i got you i got you all so right. my number eight is a card that's always been 
kind of annoying and kind of scary, um, but has recently become much more terrified thanks to Ikoria and ability counters. My number eight is Skullbriar mm. the Walking Grave. Um, so Skullbriar is a black and a green, originally printed in Commander 2011, legendary creature, zombie elemental, one power, one toughness, and haste. Whenever Skullbriar deals combat damage to a player, put a plus one, plus one counter on it. And counters remain on Skullbriar as it moves to any zone other than a player's hand or library. So I was playing Commander on Magic Online the other day, and Ikoria has made it so that you, things get counters, ability counters. Those are counters now. So someone had the black card that puts an indestructible counter on it. That's never leaving. Yeah. <laughs> So that's unless you can like return them to a hand or you or no that, that's spin nope. it into myth no nope, other than a player so you'd have to as it moves to any zone other than, okay so you'd have to bounce it to their hand or tuck it in their library somehow yeah, right. um, as being the only way to deal with this and that's that's a challenge for some people and so I was just amazed at how big this thing got and then also mm-hmm. oh right those counters aren't going away. <laughs> right. How does this card interact with Ozolith? <clears throat> because it says that it references those counters. So it's, it's those. Right. It think, stays those. Right. And then Ozolith does the same thing. It says put those counters on the Ozolith if it had counters when it leaves Good the question. battlefield. So I don't know if those double, right? If they share or know. if Skullbriar goes, no, Ozolith, those are mine. <laughs> it does say it is a replacement effect, right? Whenever a creature you control leaves the battlefield, if it had counters on it, like this one, put those right. counters on the Ozolith. So right. Yeah, I don't know. I, I, I honestly, a, it sounds. I need a judge. Yeah, we need judges up in here. It sounds yeah. like it's a replacement effect that you can choose, but I don't know. Wonderful um, art by Nils Hom, um, but just I just remember playing against this card, and I was like, was it always this scary? Yeah, <laughs> yeah. This card is super expensive, fourteen and a half bucks for regular. If you're at the launch party, it's thirty five for the foil. I believe it is. Nils Hom is one of those artists. I always thought, you know, we've seen Seb. With his unique style, go right. crazy. Uh, Magali, similarly. You, you When you look at a Rebecca Gay piece, you know it's a Rebecca Gay piece. Right. Nils Hom is similar for me. You it's know, Baleful similar. Strix, Thrag Tusk, this card. But hasn't, like, like surmounted the the all-star list yet. I would mm-hmm. not be surprised to see Nils Hom... Uh, etch himself onto that list. I'm not sure that he can, though. Like, I think... And again, I don't mean that in a shady way, but I mean, like, the artists that you described before him... While they can do like ghastly, it's still beautiful. Like mm. Nils is is very dirty, and I mean that sure. like it's it's not. I mean, well, I it fails. It just doesn't have right. The it's idea. not a yeah, bad thing, but like it's just not. I don't think it's mass. Sure. The masses would dig it. You know what I mean? I think Fair. just a certain kind of person is going to be like, that's gorgeous. Whereas right. the average person at the LGS is going to be like, that's gross. But yeah, I don't I don't necessarily want a skull briar hanging on my wall. Yeah. <laughs> you know, I do think we're probably going to get to a point where we do top 10 artists cards. Oh, um, right. And there's 167 that Nils yeah, has we could done. Yeah, we could do artists. Uh, Gilderbaron, I believe, is my personal favorite. Yeah. From, uh, oh, Nils Gilderbaron's so cute. Yeah. Gilderbaron's really nice. All right. Let's move in here to number seven. Ruben, what's your number seven? My number seven, Aaron likes these five drop. Evan also likes five drops that do nothing the turn they enter the battlefield. <laughs> hey. But my my co-hosts really love do nothing five drops. Um, I prefer... One drops that kill you immediately. Uh, and that's exactly what Eli Loveman did when he won Pro Tour London, which was the second mythic championship with humans. Uh, thanks in large part to Champion of the Parish. Oh, no. A one drop originally a rare from Innistrad, reprinted in the Blessed vs. Cursed dual decks. A 1-1 one, one for one white mana. It is a human soldier, and it says, whenever another human enters the battlefield under your control, put a plus one, plus one counter on Champion of the Parish. What a powerhouse this card is. This card goes from, like, uh, oh, it's a little dorky 1-1 one, one, to, like, oh my god, it must be stopped. Everything you do I mean? makes this guy huge. You can put humans in, into uh, play in instant speed, so that's happening. Like, yep. this card was nuts. When mm-hmm. it was good, it was crazy good. This was uh, pelt collector before pelt collector. This was, you know, the f- uh, experiment one before experiment one. Um, this was experiment after. zero, as it were. <laughs> yeah. Right. This card was a four, four for one mana a lot of the time. Yep. And that's I will okay. never cease to be amazed by people who they take a look at the modern landscape and it's like, I could play scape shift. I could cast a turn three Tron. You know what I want to do? Cast champion of the parish. <laughs> mm-hmm. Turn one parish. That's go. what I want to do. That's cool. It's fine. 
Aaron, what's number seven? My number seven is a really neat take on a civic creature. You know, there's been a lot of talk about how Simic has become, you know, the combination to beat lately. You know, you have Hydrate Crisis. Um, you know, we have Growth Spiral. We, you know, they, that that color combination has been given a lot of gifts in Standard, um, and those two colors are very good right now. Um, this is a card that nobody really talks about. I got the chance to play with this in a two-headed giant game uh, with our friend Joe. Hey, Joe, um, and I just absolutely love this card, and I had so much fun trying to find neat ways to trigger it or break it. Um, my number seven is Bio Essence Hydra. Um, so Bio Essence Hydra is three colorless, a green and a blue, originally printed in War of the Spark, a Hydra Mutant, a 4-4 four, four with Trample. When it enters the battlefield with a plus one, plus, well, so it enters the battlefield with a plus one, plus one counter on it for each loyalty counter on Planeswalkers you control. How cool is that? We're not done. Whenever one or more loyalty counters are put on Planeswalkers you control, put that many plus one, plus one counters on Bio Essence Hydra. So just casting a Planeswalker triggers this, because when the Planeswalker enters, you immediately put the loyalty counters on it. So you could play Planeswalkers that you didn't even really care about, where it's like, ah, here's a Jaya. Yeah, okay, yeah. sure. It just makes it bigger. And then before you know it, you have this monstrosity with Trample. Um, and then if you happen to, you know, like the Planeswalkers and need them, mm-hmm. go ahead and plus one those babies because this will benefit from that. And so um, I had a lot of fun playing with Narset and Jaya and this. And even when Narset wasn't particularly good, you know, they might not have been drawing extra cards, but just putting those counters on her made this happen. And I really enjoyed that little mini yeah. game. The best uh, Planeswalker with this for my money, is Kiora Behemoth Beckoner. Oh. Uh, because not only does it share colors, but you can play your Bioessence Hydra a turn earlier, right? You play right. this, you play Kiora on turn three, and then mm-hmm. your turn Hydra four. on turn four. You draw a card off the Hydra. Nice. Or if you play it in the opposite order, you get seven plus one plus one counters on your Hydra. And instead yeah. of just six. Instead of right. just making a 10-10, it's an 11-11. This card, I was surprised it didn't see any standard play because it yeah. is a meteoric bomb in Limited. Mm-hmm. Oh, yeah. And, and a set that has uncommon yeah. Planeswalkers, this thing is king. Oh, my mm-hmm. God. I never lost a game in which I played it, and I never won a game when they played it against me, and I didn't right. immediately have removal for it, like, yep. instantaneously. So that's uh, that's really cool. And because it enters the battlefield with the counters on it, like you don't have, it's not a trigger. You can't be like, okay, minus X, minus X or whatever. No, it's just, it's a giant monster from the get-go. And it has trample. That's another one that just killed me. I was like, <laughs> really? Really? Was like I 14, swear when 14. they were designing the Simic, they just had a dartboard with various abilities or mechanics basically and whatever they got it was like ah oh, flanking blocking rampage yeah that give it get slap it on there we're exactly like, what was the real what was the point let's, let's sweep on this one it's fine yeah <laughs> all right <clears throat> ripple ripple for your nerves mm, ripple's nice free the all ripple right. goodness <laughs> Wow. Well, look, uh, my number seven here uh, is a card that has seen lots of printings and even came back for a little while. It was about to leave us once rotation hits. But hey, if you're going to put a counter on something, you should put a counter on everything just for tapping it. Thanks to Steel Overseer. Mm-hmm. Steel Overseer is two generic mana for a rare 1-1 one, one artifact creature construct that just says simply tap colon, put a plus one plus one counter on each artifact creature you control. You've got to kill this thing on sight, because if you don't, uh, your ornithopters will get bigger, and this will get bigger, and all those artifacts that play really well with plus one, plus one counters, which we're probably going to talk about later, are also going to be a nightmare. And just for two, uh, this does so much! (laughs) And it counts itself. Again, that was one of those things that, and this was all the way back from Magic 2011, so even back in 2011, they were giving us the goodness of, like, you got a shock for this thing, or it's going to take over the game. Mm -hmm. Absolutely And nowadays, this thing is fighting alongside ginger brutes among other things <laughs> in historic yeah. uh, one of the powerhouses in historic is the all that glitters azorius aggro deck um and this thing is uh boy is this thing a house yeah, yeah. current super sweet let's move on here to number six reuben watch number six my number six is a card that is near and dear to my heart and i i can't find a single deck it's ever been played in um however it is the first ever pre-release card ever given out at pre-releases before Monsters Hound came out in Exodus, before Revenant came out in Stronghold. You had Dirt Cowl Worm in your pre-release <laughs> packs wow. for Tempest. 
Uh, non-foil dirt cowl worm, mind you. They had a magic M stamped on it with a uh, gold leaf instead. Mm-hmm. Dirt cowl worm is a 3-4 for a four colorless and a green for a worm. And whenever an opponent plays a land, put a plus one, plus one counter on dirt cowl worm. Not the best magic card. No. But it has a place in history. <clears throat> Wow, it really does. It has the word pre-release, a little M with a circle here. Mm-hmm. Uh, cool, I, I suppose. Uh, I don't remember going to a pre-release for Tempest. I was still actively playing at the time. I did go to pre-releases for uh, Mirage and Visions, mm-hmm. uh, which was very cool, uh, and, and Weather Light, which is great. Um, but then again, maybe I just kind of disconnect a little bit there. But uh, sure. Dirt Cow Worm is, is awesome. Back in it's the day, also, this looked really sweet, by the way. This the Fraser really cool. art, by the way. We don't see that. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I dig that artwork. This is a pretty forgettable card, so. I mean, yeah. I mean, all in all, like, it's neat. It's got a place in history, right? Yeah, exactly. So there you go. All right, Aaron, what's your number six? My number six is a card um, that ended up being the centerpiece of a standard deck that people still play to this day. Um, it's got a bit of an engine attached to it. I love the flavor of it, and uh, I will absolutely play with this card. Uh, my number six is Corvald, Fey Cursed King. Um, so Corvald is two colorless, a black, a red, and a green. Legendary creature, Dragon Noble. Four power, four toughness, and flying. Uh, you know, you were right, Ruben. My five power, my five CMC do nothing. This one at least does something. <laughs> does like I'm getting better. I'm showing growth. Yeah. Uh, Whenever Corvald enters the battlefield or attacks, sacrifice another permanent. Whenever you sacrifice a permanent, put a plus one, plus one counter on Corvald and draw a card. Holy cow. Yeah. Card it's advantage in these colors and just a really big beater that you need to deal with. Um, it could be any permanent, so it can be a food token. It can be an evolving wilds. It can be, you know, anything under the sun. It makes a really great commander. Uh, Commander's Quarters did a very nice list around this card. Mm-hmm. Um, just a fun, flavorful. I love the the flavor text implying that he was cursed at his own wedding. He ate mm-hmm. the banquet, the gifts, and the guests. Like, it's just mm-hmm. so good. <laughs> yeah. That's terrific. This is one of those cards where Wizards is like, here's a cool commander. Oops, it rocks constructed. Like, right. just and so you happens. you need this in your it's aristocrat fine. deck because aristocrat te- yeah. decks tend to be very low to the ground. You know, yep. they tend to not really. And this is sort of like, this kind of reminds me of Falcon Wrath Noble, how it's like, you know, you had that one flyer, that big beater where, you know, you mm-hmm. can gum up the board and you can do sack things. But sometimes you just need something really big to like close out the game. And, right. you know, this card does that on top of giving you card advantage. Like, that's so good. Pretty uh, powerful starts in those Jund Corvald decks where you could go Gilded Goose into Paradise Druid into turn three Corvold. Uh, And then later in the game, you had the Trail of Crumbs engine and, of course, Cat Oven. Mm Mm-hmm. Really cool card. Yeah, this card is super cool. And I just, again, I, I sort of appreciate the fact that it was meant to be one thing, but it's actually two things. Mm-hmm. So I'll take my constructed all-stars any way I can get right. them. Um, so this next card has been printed uh, quite a few times, well, a few times, uh, yet remains very expensive, is definitely a casual all-star. I used to hear about this from back in the day. Um, because it costs seven mana, it was completely unplayable in its limited format, but that's okay because there's a lot of fun in the army in a can called Avenger of Zendikar. <laughs> yep. <laughs> Avenger of Zendikar is two green, five generic mana for a mythic elemental. It is a 5-5 five, five that says when it enters the battlefield, you put a 0-1 green plant creature token onto the battlefield for each land you control. And it has landfall, which is one of my favorite mechanics ever, and I hope to God it's coming back. Whenever a land enters the battlefield under your control, you may put a plus one, plus one counter on each plant creature you control. This was a cube staple. This was a sealed monster in draft Zendikar is one of the fastest draft formats of all time so it was trash oh, yeah. but even though if you could get to seven mana in the format in which you played this I think you're gonna have a really really good time yeah I mean it was not great in limited but in standard it was pretty spectacular in those Valakut ramp decks this oh. was my number eight nice um my only higher on the list uh not only is it an army in a can but that army can grow and grow and grow thanks to other ways to get more lands onto the battlefield. Yeah, fetch lands were, again, in this standard format, so your plants yep. can get dumb real, real fast. Uh, so this card was super sweet. And again, I was like, wow, 12 bucks, $10? Sure. All right. I mean, it's, it's a hell of a card. High five. Let's move on here to <laughs> number five. Ruben, what's number five? My number five is a land that can give itself plus one, plus one counters. You know, we all love uh, a good uh, creature land. 
Um, but perhaps none has had the tournament pedigree of Raging Ravine. Mm. Oh. Raging Ravine Pro Tours. Uh, has one Pro Tours, absolutely. Mm-hmm. And also enters the battlefield tapped. Um, it taps for a red or a green mana. And then for two colorless red-green, it becomes a 3-3 red and green elemental creature with, whenever this creature attacks, put a plus one, plus one counter on it, it's still a land. So later in the game, especially in those Junge decks where all you want to do is trade one for one, one for one, one for one, until nothing is left but lands, well, guess what? Raging Ravine attacks for four, attacks for five, attacks for six. That's the end of the game. Uh, The whole land, the World Wake land cycle... Um, of having the creature lands, essentially. Uh, All of them were basically amazing. All of them Mm -hmm. were super duper crazy pushed because you just have to imagine that your mana base is also part of your creature base now and you (laughs) get them for free. And it's not like this was a crappy creature that does nothing. This is a 3-3 that immediately becomes a 4-4 when you're smashing in. There's plenty of ways to put put more plus and plus on counters on it. You're proliferating or whatever. But just back in the day, you just activated and smashed because if they killed that one, oh, oops, I got another Raging Ravine over here because it was fixing my mana a minute ago and now it's just going to win me the game so you essentially had like 28 creatures or something in your john deck it was insane <laughs> like this card is amazing uh aaron what's number five my number five is also a land um this is the card that i immediately think of when i think of plus one plus one counters um it was good and standard you don't you don't even need to be running like a dedicated plus one plus one strategy you know there were a series of lands that came out of innistrad block that were just good yeah. value that you know you you lost nothing by playing and you know they made great mana sinks they made good decks even better um and and i'm always happy to see this card uh my number five is gavany township Absolutely. um so Gavany Township uh, is originally printed in Innistrad. You tap it for one colorless mana, or you can pay two colorless, a green and a white, and tap it to put a plus one, plus one counter on each creature you control. So this saw play in the Birthing Pod decks in Modern as a way to uh, reset your Persist creatures, like your Murderous Redcap, your Kitchen Finks. Um, and it was also a way to make things really big. If you have a Kasali Pride Mage that you know you don't really need to sacrifice right. anymore, well, now that thing is a really big body. Um, and so you, know, you usually had a lot of mana laying around your voice of resurgence has got bigger um and just sort of these fair kind of value decks you know this card really shined and um yeah. you know still sees play there are still people out there these devoted druid decks you know there are still these green white decks that want nothing more than to win the game with the kitchen finks and a plus one plus one counter and this land will help you do that this was my yeah, number got, eight go ahead it got to a point with Gavany Township, where Birthing Pod decks weren't even comboing anymore. Yeah. <laughs> they were just playing a Bird of Paradise, uh-huh. playing a Voice of Resurgence, and beating you to death with them <laughs> with a Gavany Township. Yeah. That's all that they would do. Yeah. Was you, they would just be like, all right, pick off your thing over here, get some value over here, search up this thing, go get this thing, and attack you with a 4-5 bird. Like, mm-hmm. thankfully, they reprinted it in Commander 2020, finally. Uh, because for a long time, the only way you could find it was an Innistrad. Mm. And uh, this card was just an absolute monster. It was a tournament winning, Grand Prix winning, States winning. Like this thing goes into a lot of very powerful, awesome decks. And even now, that's a hell of a rate. Like that mm. rate yeah. Oh, yeah. on a land, uncounterable, is yeah. happening, is <laughs> damn, damn good. And that whole cycle was good. Mm-hmm. Uh, you had things like Moreland Haunt. You had Vault of the Archangel later, actually. Mm-hmm. Uh, that one was Dark Ascension, which was an enemy one. The whole cycle was fine. Right. This one, though, was the, was the was winner. The winner. Yeah, not even close. Uh, my number five is higher on someone else's list, and that's totally fine. We will get to it. So let's move on here to number four. Uh, I'll go ahead and tackle the number four. This one has uh, is another sort of semi-recent card. I've uh, been printing the last couple years. But its impact, and particularly over time, all I've seen uh, is this card being played more and more and more. And the ability for it to be played even in different formats. I'm starting to see it, uh, starting to see it in sort of older formats as well. Um, Wizard said, look, we're going to put... This, we're playing this creature, right? And we're going to let you like add reach and trample and protection from multicolored and call it Stone Coil Serpent. And it's just like mm-hmm. fan freaking tastic against a bunch of really weird things like mm-hmm, the three drop mm-hmm, to fairy mm-hmm. and stuff like that. Yep. Stone Coil Serpent. Definitely Clarion also. Absolutely. Yeah. <laughs> is X generic mana for a zero zero rare artifact creature snake. It has reach, trample, protection from multicolored. Why? It has reach, everybody. <laughs> It does all the things. They always forget that it has reach, and I just, they run smack into it. Uh, And it enters the battlefield with X plus one plus one counters on it, so. When you you had an X 
mana artifact in Tempest. It was Shifting Wall. Mm -hmm. And instead of having three positive abilities, it had Defender. Mm -hmm. You also had, I think, like Marauding, Maraudering something that had to attack every turn. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Like trash and now you just get you just get questing beast for x mana like you just get everything yeah you just get everything it's good early it's good late like it's just good sometimes you play it as a two mana just a beater and you just yeah. add to it later or whatever over time like there's ways I play to play it as a this. one drop and then two drop Watley's raptor and get in there there we go get you like yeah. this card is super sweet and again this to me is just kind of like it's just kind of crept up like it now it's like a six mm -hmm. seven dollar card but it's like yeah you know it's really good all the time Sees vintage play uh shops loves it because dak faden can't take it and dak faden yeah. loves to do it's that um i love to tell the story of how i went to try to ash and rider this thing and it was like whoops <laughs> multicolored <laughs> can't can't ride that ash <laughs> i uh wow i i love stone cold i had Serpent. to back that it, ash up you know what i'm saying that's right Use a fine serpent when you... Okay, <laughs> so Christ. the other thing is, this card is seeing a ton of play in the new Mono Green Stompy deck, of and that deck loses a lot to 8-drop uh, Ugin. Yeah. Oh. Ex except... Except the stone coil in there. sticks around. Let me yeah. tell so they tap out for Ugin and it's wipe your board. Hero. Like, they get a 5-for-1, and then they still die to your 3-3 three, three stone coil. It's the hero we need, but not necessarily we deserve or flip that around. Yeah. Something like that. Yeah. It's fine. Ruben, what's number four? The old snake in the grass. My number four <laughs> is uh, a card that has one, two different Pro Tours. Oh boy. Uh, one Worlds in 1998 as part of Recurring Survival and was an Oath of Druids target oh God. in Bob Mars 1991 Pro Tour Chicago Oath deck. 1991? Uh, I'm sorry, 1999. Okay. Uh, Oath of Druids deck. Okay. Now, this is the this is the deck that beat uh, Necro in the finals. I was sixteen. Uh, the the three oath targets in this deck are Shard Phoenix, Morphling, and Spike Feeder. Oh my <laughs> lord! <laughs> yeah, so, yeah. Th this is a those this were is the a strong. Days. It's a, we, those were the days. They really were. Spike Feeder. We, yeah. uh, colorless green green for a zero zero spike. Uh, enters the battlefield with two plus one plus one counters on it. It has two activated abilities. Pay two colorless and remove a plus one plus one counter from Spike Feeder. Put a plus one plus one counter on target creature. And it also has remove a plus one plus one counter from Spike Feeder, colon, you gain two life. Of course, more recently, this card has uh, uh, been part of the Cord uh, combo decks with another plus one plus one card, Archangel of Thune, mm. that combos with this card very well to give you infinite life. Yeah, Spike Feeder is it, it. Spike Feeder fills that weird niche, right? You need this thing that you can activate at instant speed that interacts with other stuff with counters that gains yep. you life. So that's a cool benefit. So you, you get to play the game longer. You don't just die to some damage or whatever. It, it's got those right stats for just yep. what you need it to be. That's all it yeah. does these days. It it's doesn't just feel weirdo. like it should be amazing, but it is. It just is. It it does what you need it to do. I I can't. Mm -hmm. Describe it was also time shifted, which is why it's in modern and able to combo with uh, Archangel of Thune. Very nice, very nice. Aaron, what's number four? Well, Ruben stole my thunder because number four was Archangel of Thune. Oh, <laughs> well, we got a good combo. We there you do, go. We do. Um, so Archangel of Thune is three colorless and two white. It was originally printed in Magic 2014 uh, in Angel with Flying and Lifelink. She's three power, four toughness. Whenever you gain life, put a plus one, plus one counter on each creature you control. Lord. Still goes for over $25, depending on where you get it from. I remember it didn't really do much in standard. Like, it was fine, but right. uh, it really took off in modern as a pod target. You know, this was something that you could pod for. Um, you had a lot of ways to gain incremental life, such as the spike feeder combo. That was one of those cards people didn't remember was in modern. <laughs> yeah. Spike feeder, what? And so, um, yeah, this could get out of hand very, very quickly. You were running kitchen thinks, and she also triggers herself. She has lifelink too. So, um, you know, like Ruben said, sometimes you're playing a pod game and sometimes you're just playing a Selesnia or junk value deck and this was the card that would allow you to do it this card is uh one of the most meteoric bombs in limited not mm. only is it flying it has evasion it has lifelink to trigger itself it makes your entire team larger if you have anything with lifelink already on the board you throw this down and smash in it was great in constructed formats mm -hmm. it's an angel it's a mythic angel so it's already 25 bucks right there yep. this card is dope 
One of the most iconic moments I can think of of Archangel of Thune came out of Ivan Flock's sideboard at Pro Tour the Magic Nick's 2015. Rams. The <laughs> Nick's Fleece Rams for the win. Wow. Yes. Game five against Jackson Cunningham. Get in there with your three eights or whatever. Oh my God. Yeah, that was a wild. That was a wild game. Wow. All right. Let's move on here to number three. Ruben, what's number three? My number three is boy. I love this card. I just need to think about this card for a second. Because I love this. Let's soak it in. Um, it's the only mono red card on my list. Uh, I'm sure everyone has died to this card a number of times. If you've played it, you've won a number of games with this card. It does so much, and it is so flavorful, and it does exactly what it tells you it's going to do, which is run away with the game. Oh my my god! Number three is run away Steamkin. Mm Mm-hmm. A colorless and a red gets you a 1-1 one, one elemental, uh, originally from Guilds of Ravnica. Only ever been printed in Guilds of Ravnica, apparently. Yeah. Not in any of the uh, recent reprint sets. Whenever you cast a red spell, if Runaway Steamkin has fewer than three plus one plus one counters on it, put a plus one plus one counter on Runaway Steamkin. Remove three plus one plus one counters from Runaway Steamkin. Add red, red, red. So... Obviously, the god draw is turn one, whatever. Turn two, Steamkin. Hope they don't kill it. Untap. Turn three. We're doing it. Play one drop, play one drop, play one drop. Attack for, for four. Deal them four damage. Take all the counters off and play a, a Goblin Chain Whirler or whatever. Oh, like, doesn't god. matter at that point. Like, if you. And then, once you start casting, like, as soon as you remove those counters and cast another red spell, you put a counter back it on. It gets another counter. Yep. I love this card. Um, This is a card that I would absolutely play red for. I remember when this card first came out along with the Arcbound Phoenix decks, Mm -hmm. the Arclight Phoenix decks, the mono red version. I absolutely played with that. And, uh... Um, experimental frenzy. Um, I found out the other day this actually sees play in Commander uh, because red is very short on ramp options, and so okay. it is not unusual for people to play a Runaway Steamkin in a mono red Commander deck um, because cool. you are very likely to just keep that chain going. And so I have it in my Pashalik Mons deck, and and we'll see how nice. it goes. Like I knew this card was going to be good, right? But yeah. I didn't expect it to be like one of the all stars in the red deck. And mm-hmm. between this and experimental frenzy and the way those things work together and mm-hmm. the mana reduction costs of of the of the cards in yeah. the deck and stuff, like, it is kind of amazing that you can just play your entire deck with two runaway steamkins and an experimental frenzy. Mm-hmm. And it gets scary and ridiculous all at once. Aaron, what's number three? Uh, my number three is a card that had been out for a while. I, I don't recall it ever really seeing any standard play. Um, and then one day, modern players just woke up to it. <laughs> and before you know it, it was a five, six, seven dollar card in modern. Um, my number three is Hardened Scales. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Came yep. out of no- Hardened Scales, one green True. mana, originally printed in Cons of Tarkir. It's an enchantment. If one or more plus one plus one counters would be placed on a creature you control, that many plus one plus one plus one counters are placed on it instead. Uh, there was a time where hardened scales affinity had surpassed normal affinity as we yes. knew it. You were playing this, you were playing like frog meat. You were playing like Arcbound worker. Like you were playing the yep. most mundane modular cards because you could pair them with this. And suddenly they were these bombs that you needed to mm-hmm. deal with, um, you know, and this deck could just kill you out of nowhere. And, you know, watching people do the combat math between this and, you know, some other cards that we'll probably talk about. Uh, I mean, this card was just another one of those things that you had to deal with on site. Yeah. And the fact that you can play it on turn one uh, really made it much more difficult because it always felt like they always had it um, and it had, it had been around for a while. And then one day people were like, oh, this is good (laughs) so as far as i'm aware this started out as like a meme yeah this started out as a joke yeah people were like there's no way that's there's no way um because this was what so while i was working at tales of adventure in bethlehem pennsylvania one of my co-workers was peter tuburgeon who's better known as pepsi hat peter Mm -hmm. uh he's the one who wears that pepsi hat whenever he's on scg coverage and he's Mm -hmm. one of the best affinity players in the world and he was like messing around with a joke version of Affinity with it had hardened scales in it. It was like, I think this is real. And then like top 16 to GP the next week, I think, Jeez. or something weird like that. And then hardened scales just took off. Like it was one of those stories like the like the Shadow Mage Infiltrator Psychotog story where it was like this was a joke, but now we're just doing it. Right. And it turns out it's amazing. 
Yeah, this was my number five. Uh, this card essentially just it gets you going and it just kind of turbocharges everything. It turbocharges modular because you're moving the counters yeah. and then you're adding counters when you're mm -hmm. moving them around, which yep. is ridiculous. If you have yeah, multiples, so, they do stack correctly. So oh, that's yeah. awesome too. And like you said, the moving them around counts too, where it's like, so, you know, you put a plus one plus one counter on it. So that initial act triggers this and then moving yep. it triggers it again. And mm -hmm. there were so many times I was I would watch this deck and just trying to keep up up with it and the it's light so bulb crazy. just constantly going off of oh oh <laughs> yeah it just adds one every time the counters uh -huh. move it just keeps picking up more counters yeah absolutely fantastic uh so for my number three uh i'll, I'll be honest the top of my list is a little basic if you if you want to put You're it that basic. way it's fine it's a little hey, expected it's, it's okay it's fine these cards are still great i still love them and i just want to note that if i'm making a list of the top 10 plus one plus one counter cards i want to make sure that i have some heavy hitters near the top end of it and this card while not being the top top end and then get uh, kind of overshadowed a few years later you can't deny the impact and the love that hangerback walker gets mm -hmm. day in day out it's 2XXX mana for a rare artifact creature construct that is a 0-0, zero, zero, but enters the battlefield with X plus one plus one counters on it. And when it dies, you put a 1-1 one, one colorless Thopter artifact creature token with flying onto the battlefield for each plus one plus one counter on Hangerback Walker. And for one generic mana tap colon, put a plus one plus one counter on it. So this card is sweet early, it's sweet late. It sees play all the way back to the older format, or at least it certainly did until maybe something yep. else we talk about. No, it still does. Shows up. Well, that's fantastic because this is the army in a can that just gets bigger and it yep. didn't take long for this thing to turn into a $20 rare and standard just completely ran standard while it was in it uh and was to one of the, it was like the best two drop you could play for years honestly yeah and standard it was there was a, and speaking of that standard you could play three four five colors no trouble at all and people were still playing this on turn two mm -hmm. right uh this was the two drop that all of the three color decks were playing just because it's because you hit it every turn like, too, and you right. got there. Because yeah. it's it's a chronomaton pinata. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so over time gave you all that value. I once did again. not put it on my list because I ain't no hanger back, hanger back girl. Wow. Hanger back girl. I always sing paperback writer in my head oh, when wow. I hear paperback writer hanger back. I can't hit that high note. You can't hit that note. It's okay. No, but, yeah, I sing fine. it in my head. I don't sure. sing it in real life. In your head, though. Apparently, I'm pitch. also not a hanger back girl. <laughs> wow. Wow. All right. Let's move. Not everybody two. can be. It's fine. Let's move number two. Ruben, watch number two. My number two is a card that has been just in a million decks. I mean, I'm looking at the list here. It's been in Jund. It's been in Maverick. It's been in Company. It's been in like Bant, it's been in Creature Toolbox decks, and it took until PT Brussels 2020 in the hands of Yoel Larson before it was able to win a Pro Tour. My number two is Tireless Tracker. Yeah. Tireless Tracker, two colorless and a green, gets you a 3-2 Human Scout. Whenever a land enters the battlefield under your control, investigate. Whenever you sacrifice a clue, put a plus one, plus one counter on tireless tracker so it grows itself it is it, it's card flow in and of itself it's another landfall card without the word landfall on it it's true. Uh, originally from shadows over innistrad it's a rare um it and it's just it's just everything you want a card to be mm -hmm. this card is play in legacy um you know the nice. legacy lands decks love to play this because if you're playing yeah. against lands you're probably boarding out all your creature removal mm -hmm. uh surprise <laughs> Um, and yeah. because you're playing a lands deck, this thing gets out of control really quickly. Scape shift, a lot of the red green or you know or the teamer scape shift decks in modern will mm -hmm. also sort of you know sideboard into this as a way to kind of um, you know prepare for the people that are bringing in the negates and bringing in the foxies or whatever. Well, now you need to deal with this thing that's going to get really really big and that you have to you have to deal with. This was definitely on my short list. There's like the ability to make permanents for free by playing yeah. lands that they can't even counter like, and the permanence that it makes draws you cards. The permanence that it makes that draws you cards makes the thing that made the permanents bigger. Like yep. it just, it does all the things. it all yep. is one ridiculous package. It was the, one of the best things you could be doing for years and standard. Uh, to me, this was definitely designed to be one of the best cards in the format. And mm -hmm. it certainly was. Uh, and I'll take my landfall triggers any way I can go. <laughs> Absolutely. Thank you and, uh, for my money, my favorite Vanessa Martin cosplay is oh, yeah, the, her she tireless did that. tracker. Yeah. Nice. 
Nice. Uh, Aaron, what's number two? My number two is one of those cards where if you had told me that this card would be a $5 rare, that would see play in Vintage and sometimes even Legacy, I would have never believed you. My number two is Mana Gorger Hydra. <laughs> Oh, boy. Okay. So Mana Gorger Hydra is two colorless and a green. It's a creature type Hydra, originally printed in Magic Origins. It's a 1-1 with Trample. But don't you worry, it'll get big on its own. Whenever a player, that's me or you, casts a spell, put a plus one plus one counter on Mana Gorger Hydra. So if you're playing Vintage, you've got Moxon. You have other uh, very, very cheap spells like Ancestral Recall. You've got your Time Walks. Um, this is another one of those cards that blinking before you know it it's really really big uh sees play in the very fair usually in like a fair teamer shell sometimes they'll play it in paradoxical outcome again as a way for these combo decks to you know next level you you know you're bringing in things to deal with paradoxical outcome you're probably not running a lot of creature removal in vintage anyways and now here's this hydra that it just gets bigger and even just digging for answers you got to cast cantrips to find the tools to deal with this and as you do it just gets bigger and it has trample um so you can't just throw a token in front of it. You can't just right. put a Tarmogoyf in front of it. Um, eventually it's going to outclass it. And, you know, this card's seen played in at least two formats. Like, and, and the power level on this is quite high. Wow. Uh, I, yeah. I was not expecting to hear uh, us talking about Mana Gorge or Hydra. Same. I'm not going to I lie. almost put Torian Mauler on my list, oh, yeah. which is similar. Uh, it gets it has the same whenever a player plays a spell, put a plus one plus one counter on it. But it's a rare from Morning Tide. It's a color or two colors in red. Yes, and it right exactly, and it doesn't have trample. You can play this on turn one in vintage, like just boop, boop, yeah, boop, that's boop. true. Just boop, you can boop. play anything on turn you really one in can. vintage. Yeah, it's true. Great. Like six drops, who cares, right? <laughs> Whatever. Well, I got turn my one shop. Mana Gorger Hydra <laughs> is Ladies, number two. That's incredible. Let me tell you. Well, my number two. Uh, I, th I would argue has made a little bit larger impact than the Mana Gorger Hydra, not to take anything away from Listen, the Mana Gorger Hydra. Listen, if it Hydra. didn't see, it sees play in Vintage. It does see play in Vintage, as well so. as this card, too. Uh, I got to put them back to back, because if you're going to take a look at Hangerback Walker, and you're going to say, okay, the card is great, sweet, whatever, here sure. comes your Walking Ballistas. Walking Ballistas showed up originally in Aether Revolt is $23 plus dollars. Goodness <laughs> gracious. It is 2x generic mana to cost. It is a 0, zero rare artifact creature construct that enters the battlefield with X plus one plus one counters on it. For four generic mana, colon, you put a plus one plus one counter on it, and you remove a plus one plus one counter from it to deal one damage to any target. So this card is dope. It's great early late. It has the ability to put as many counters on it as you want to with your infinite mana combos, and mm -hmm. also an instant speed to instantly kill them. Yep. So this card is just great it's hard to say anything bad about it i, I remember think. the weekend after this card came out just an immediate impact in vintage and i think randy bueller was keeping up with the challenges at that time and he was like you know won a challenge this many decks were running it and it replaced triskelion you know when a card is not only powerful enough to make its way to vintage but to replace staples that have been there for years that's really saying something and so we don't play triskelion anymore we play walking ballista and right. um for a card like that to make that big of an impact right out of the gate says something about it i almost i was so close to putting cryptic trilobite on my <laughs> list because i've talked about walking ballista and i've talked about hangerback walker and obviously both of those cards deserve to be in the top three of this list sure um but i've talked about them ad nauseum over and over and over again and i really wanted you know new cards i understand and that was a little bit for me i was like well i really want to go there but man i just i don't want to say i made the Top 10 plus muscle counter cards, not stick a walking ballista near the top. Exactly. Of them. All right. I'm glad you did because I'll, I didn't. I, I'll, I'll, I'll follow that grenade. It's fine. All right. Moving here to number one. Aaron, what's your number one? I mean, for me, it, it couldn't be anything else other than this. You know, I struggled I with this. I knew it. I knew you were going to do this. Shambling Shell? <laughs> oh, is it Shambling no. Shell? Okay. Um, but I, you know, I really struggled like you two did and that, you know, did I want to pick things I talked about before or did I want to inject some new blood into this? But when you have a card that's just so good, you know, it, it's glaring when you don't include it on your list. Um, and so my number one had to be Arkbound Ravager. Um, mm -hmm. so Arkbound Ravager is too colorless. Oh, Artifact I thought you were going to put Golgari Grave Troll. <laughs> I going to be your plus one, plus one. Plus Thank you. God you have Ravager. <laughs> it's true. Be sure to vote for Golgari Grave Troll in our honorable mentions and win yourselves a gift certificate at kustafink.com. Oh, oh, boy. Um, so, Arkbound Ravager. I will not choose you. 
<laughs> so Arcbound Ravager is two colorless. It's an artifact creature beast, zero power, zero toughness, originally printed in dark steel. Uh, sacrifice an artifact, put a plus one, plus one counter on Arcbound Ravager. Uh, and it comes into play with, an, with one counter on it thanks to modular. And so uh, it's my understanding that this is one of those development mistakes where the Ravager was supposed to cost three. Um, and mm. they were like, what's the big deal? Let's just chop it down one. Um, and now here you are. Um, you know, it was a staple of the modern affinity deck as we knew it with the ornithopters, the mox opals. Um, any creature you play becomes lethal with this thing around. You pair it with hardened scales. And not only is the sacrificing an artifact part triggering the hardened scales, but the act of putting the counters on something else triggers that too. Um, it makes combat math an absolute nightmare. Um, it allows you to play stack strategies and then turn them off when you're done. So when you're right. done with your spheres, you're done with your cages, you're done with your stacks, you can just feed them to this thing and get your opponent right where you want them. And no card just does plus one, plus one counters like this one does. And, you know, even if you're not playing like an, aff- an affinity like strategy, like, you know, right. modern play, legacy play, vintage play, I mean, you just can't deny it. Shops, mm-hmm. obviously, in, a, uh, in vintage. A classic blunder. Like, literally, yeah. they did not test this card <laughs> with affinity. <laughs> Until yeah. after the set was like printed or whatever, and then somebody was like, "Man, I should try this Ravager card in the Affinity deck. We should see what happens there." Oh my god! Free so accidentally <laughs> the entire format. Yeah. Sacrifice they, itself. Like the fact that the sacrificing is free. It's another right. thing that whenever it's, whenever put all those counters on an Ink Moth Nexus in Modern now. Yeah, your next came later. Your Mm-hmm. Yeah. It, it just got dumb. This card is fan free and fantastic. They've mm-hmm. <clears throat> they've kind of kept sort of banning all the pieces around it. They never <laughs> yeah. really would touch the Ravager, but you know you don't sure. get the mocks anymore, which is fine. Uh, yep. Just okay with me. I'll take it as yeah. A I thought one. that this was going to be Evan's number one. That's why I was so sure you were going to pick Grave Troll. So mm. now I'm really curious what Evan has. I think it's like Grave it. Troll. Isn't it? <laughs> it's Grave Troll. It's super is Grave it? Troll. No, it's not Grave Troll. Okay. Hey, Ruben, what's number one? My number one is also not Grave Troll. My number one is a card that might be in the most archetypes, just overall, of any single colored creature I've ever seen. I mean, it's only it's been reprinted a number of times, originally printed in a Commander expansion, um, and then immediately started seeing play in Legacy and Vintage. Uh, then when it became standard legal and modern legal, it became super played there. It finally won a Pro Tour, once again, in the Sultai Delirium deck that Yul Larson won Pro, uh, PT Brussels in. Um, my number one is Scavenging Ooze. Nice. Scavenging Ooze is a colorless and green. It's a 2-2 for a creature type Ooze. Pay a green mana, exile target card from a graveyard. If it was a creature card, put a plus one, plus one counter on Scavenging Ooze, and you gain one life. It's just been in everything. It's been in Jund. It's been in Sultai Delirium. It's been in Elves. It's been in Red Green Eldrazi. It's been in Collected Company. It's been in Abzan. It's been in Creature Toolbox decks. It's been in Hate Bears decks. It's been in everything in its entire lifespan. Really, Kate? Out of Really? Out of respect for Aaron, <laughs> I did not choose this card. <laughs> Thank you. Thank I you. you to know. I was right there for me. It was right there, and it's a clear winner. It's a hell of a magic card. Yeah. Listen, she had Skullbriar on her list. I didn't <laughs> realize that we were like we were okay with Skullbriar now. Somehow we had oh. unclicked the block button on Skullbriar. <laughs> but Scavenging Ooze, which by the way we previewed for one of the uh, what did we preview it for? Modern Masters, mm, one of the Modern uh, Masters yeah, expansions. It might have been one of the Modern Masters. I'm um, sure. Was a was a preview of Magic Mike's uh, a little while ago. <laughs> yeah. Um, and so you know, kind of got to give it to the fam. Yeah. Okay. I mean, this is a card that you main deck. Even when you're not, like, people think of it sometimes as a sideboard card where they're like, oh, I need it for graveyard decks, whatever. You can main right. deck this. Like, Jund has yeah. run at least anywhere from, you know, one to three copies of this in the main for as long as I can remember, just because you're playing fair magic, you know, just playing a game of magic with combat yeah. and, you know, everyday kill spells. You know, you don't even have to go out of your way to really break this. And so you almost have to come up with reasons not to run this card in addition right. to making a good sideboard card, you know, being a green card that you can green sun into or you can you know coco into or whatever it might be mm-hmm. um you know when a card like that is that good and you don't have to try yeah it totally has a spot as much modern as masters I, three yeah is when we as much create. as i detest it and really beautiful uh new art lately full yep. art yeah mm-hmm. yeah the full art's really great um <clears throat> so for my number one a uh, little bit different a little bit 
odd in some ways. You know, uh, as we all have our own reasons and, and justifications for why our lists are the way they are, in my head, I'm like, okay, if I'm going to sit down with somebody and they're learning magic and they're like, what's, you know, a plus one, plus one counter? And you kind of explain it and you're like, well, what's the coolest thing you could be doing with them? And I'm like, well, uh, a couple things. One, they just printed in Jumpstart called Branching Evolution, which is already a $20 rare. Whenever you put mm -hmm. a plus one, plus one counter on it, you put twice as yeah. many. Yeah. Cool, cool, cool. Uh, what if we just doubled all of it and we had a doubling season where everything is doubled? Listen here, Ulamog, on your meal list. <laughs> doubling season is my number one plus one plus one counter card. It is a green and four generic mana, originally a rare from Ravnica City of Guilds, no less than 50 to 60 bucks. It is now a mythic enchantment that says if an effect would create one or more tokens under your control, it creates twice that many of those tokens instead. If an effect would put one or more counters on a permanent you control, it puts twice that many counters on that permanent instead. Now, if literally Branching Evolution hadn't come out like last week, I think that might have made my number one because it's so clear and it's so like, you know, like it literally has the words plus one, plus one counter on it, for example. Um, but if you're going to go, why not just pump another couple men and double everything? Like, do I, I also expect one day there will be a tripling season. It's probably going to cost 10 mana or whatever, a million green and something. But I think tripling season will exist one day. But until then, doubling season will take all of your plus and plus and counters and make them awesome. That's all I, that's all I got. Not happy. Yeah, it Ruben. doesn't, Ruben. it doesn't. Have plus one, plus one. It doesn't say plus one plus one counter on the card, Evan. If you would rather branching evolution be in this spot, no, I would better. rather primal vigor be in this spot. <laughs> primal vigor is a fine one, yes. Primal vigor is the one that actually says the word oh plus God. one plus one counter on it. Right. It actually, you know, it, it's also pretty darn expensive. Probably needs it is a very reprint. expensive. Yes, it does. Um, I would have preferred almost anything to doubling season <laughs> at the top of your list. Almost I mean, anything? Wow. Just give me give me like a like a like a great henge. I'm or, I'm running for the something. cryptic trilobite, right? My number one is cryptic yeah, trilobite. Perfect. It's from Commander <laughs> 2020. We did it. Um it's terrible. I want, I want uh man. Wow. Well, let me tell Doubling you. Doubling season is your number one. Yeah. That's egregious. I, uh, is it, Let though? us know in the comments how stupid Evan uh, Irwin is. Wow. <laughs> is it with the uh, Leviathan? It doesn't say plus one, plus one counter no, on it. it. Leviathan plus one, plus one was counter. on the show that finishes games. Mm -hmm. Top ten finishers. Top Leviathan finishers. ends games. Does it? D this was a plus one, plus one counters episode. Does it say plus one, plus one counters on it? No, it doesn't. And that was our top ten plus one, plus one <laughs> counter cards. You'll see them on screen now for your review. You take a look at my list, Aaron's list, Ruben's top 10, and we want to hear from you about what card we did not select to talk about. And we'll select our favorite to win a $50 gift certificate to CoolStuffInc.com. But before we go, I want to thank my co-host. Thank you, Aaron. Thank you for having me. Thanks, Ruben. <laughs> I just can't. I can't with you. I, we did it. We did it. <laughs> Ain't nobody stopping us. I'm apoplectic. Apoplectic. Wow. As we go to our final slide, I want to thank our sponsor, CoolStuffInc.com, our co-sponsor, CardHoarder.com, my co-host, Aaron Camel, and Ruben Bressler, you guys, for watching or listening. I hope you support us at Patreon.com slash Magic Mics. Follow, like, tweet, favorite, share, subscribe to everything social that tells people we exist. Catch us online on Twitch.tv at Magic Mics, on Twitter at Magic Mics Cast, our Magic Mics subreddit, and like the Magic Mics page on Facebook. Talk to us privately at Magic Mics Podcast at gmail.com. Follow the audio-only podcast at Magic Mics Podcast at Libsyn com or find us on iTunes and Spotify or join us here next week same time same place for another episode of Magic Mics good night everybody <laughs>